Every time Blue Star came up, and then I just wrote, girl boss. <laughs> girl boss, girl boss, girl boss. My girlfriend Haley and I have annotated seven books together, and we wanted to talk about it today. Haley, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name's Haley. I'm Sam's girlfriend. I also like to read, and I'm in a lot of book clubs, so they usually tell me what to read. We've been doing this for quite a while. So usually one of us will pick a book, we'll read and annotate it, and then give it to the other person to read and annotate themselves, so that the second person gets to read the book with the experience of the other person inside. Yeah, totally. It's It's been a lot of fun to, um, you know, read the books that Haley has annotated and see what stood out to her, see what she underlined, wrote comments on. A lot of times, uh, I know when I'm annotating, I'll put in like, I don't know, if there's an inside joke or a reference that I can make, uh, that's always fun. The books that we've annotated so far are This Is How You Lose the Time War, <laughs> uh, Legends and Lattes, Warriors Into the Wild, Before the Coffee Gets Cold, The Hunger Games, A Psalm for the wild built and a prayer for the crown shy so quite a few books so when we started annotating books in september 2021 we weren't actually dating yet that that came later <laughs> i didn't do very much research on the first book that i wanted us to read it was just recommended to me by a friend um i found out throughout the course of reading the first book that I chose before we were dating that it was a love story <laughs> and that wasn't on purpose, but it turned out to be a really great flirting tactic. Um, <laughs> and we're a success story of that. Um, the first book I picked the first book and the first book was, this is how you lose the time war. Yeah. As I was reading it, the first book I read, I really wanted you to think that I was like smart. And so, <laughs> you know, a lot of my annotations are more about like the literary aspects of the book, like the way you would annotate a book for like an English class. If you're going to write an essay on it afterwards, um, whereas the more recent books that we've read and annotated, my annotations have been way more sillier and goofier and inside jokey. So I actually started with a book that I didn't end up finishing. I, I started with Catch-22, <laughs> which I was like, oh, it's been on my TBR for a while. I wanted to read it. Little did I know it was going to take me a long time to get into. Like I had attempted to read it before and it didn't work. That was not a good choice. I ended up DNFing that one like... 30 pages in or so. Like, I think it was more of annotating so I could understand the book rather than annotating for bonding purposes. I don't know, it just wasn't the right book for me <laughs> to do. Yeah. Uh, so then I ended up switching to Warriors Into the Wild. Classic uh, move. <laughs> of course. So first of all, it's a lot quicker to get through. It's a book that I was already familiar with. Uh, it's one that I know that I love. I think when I started this one, we were, we were dating. Yeah. I think. Did I put a date in this? I don't no. think I did. Yeah, but I think we were already dating. So this was like, I want to show you a book that I loved growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and so I annotated it with that in mind of, you know, what I liked about it, sort of reliving that nostalgic yeah. factor um, and knowing that in doing that, you would kind of understand something new about me. Yeah, I think it's significant that both of us picked short books right at the beginning. Totally. I think Time War is like, you know, sub 200 pages. Yeah, Warriors is like... 195. Warriors Into the Wild is 272, which is longer, but it's, I don't it's know. It's middle grade, so right. it goes quickly. Yeah, it's got wide margins. <laughs> and also when we first got started, both of us picked a book at the same time and started reading them at the same time and then swapped, even if that, that was the intention. It didn't end up like, the timeline didn't work out perfectly, mm -hmm. but later on down the road, one of us would just pick a book that we thought the other might like. So we started with like a one-to-one -one swap. And right. now it's just like passing random books around. Yeah, like it's less of a formal thing now, more just, hey, I annotated this book for you. Here you go. And then <laughs> <laughs> take it. Uh, oh, one thing that I love that we've done is that I feel like there's not a whole lot of pressure to read the book soon after you've annotated it. Yeah. Like when you give it to me, I know that there's no rush. Yeah. Uh, but I will have to read it before I annotate one for you. Uh, yes. So there's kind of like a guideline there, but it's not a strict commitment every single time. True. Except for when we read The Hunger Games, because the whole time <laughs> I was reading The Hunger Games, I was really excited to watch the movie again. And I really wanted you to finish it soon so we could watch the movie together. Totally. And I did take that into account. That's why I picked it up quickly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, it was also, it's also significant to note that the majority of our relationship has been long distance. Yes. So, true. um, you know, when we started reading these, we were long distance and then we traded eventually and then <laughs> traded back eventually. But those trades happened like three months apart because we didn't see each other very often. Right, so there was like enough time mm. to, to actually yeah. get the book in in a natural way. Um, and it's also a cool mechanism. Like anyone who's doing long distance knows that 
you got to be creative in the ways that you like communicate and connect and this was like a really unique way one thing that i love about doing this is that it feels like i'm like there with you while you're reading it yeah uh where, where that's i think one of the best parts of it like I loved reading The Hunger Games while you were away for the holidays because, like, you know, we couldn't call as much. We couldn't talk as much. Yeah. So, like, experiencing you through that book was was really cool for me. Yeah. I also, I read Prayer for the Crown Shy when I was woofing, which means I was living off the grid working on a farm for a couple weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so I think I read it in a day. And so it was really cool. I would go entire days without talking to anyone, and then I could sit down and read this alongside you totally yeah and also it's a lovely story uh, so right. <laughs> and like i feel like a farm is an ideal place to mm -hmm. read solar punk <laughs> like, true there's a leaf <laughs> in it <laughs> oh yeah did you put that there or did i it looks like one of the ones that oh, would be at Syracuse. I, oh I it know. says right here on the page did you leave a leaf in here on purpose or did it naturally fall there oh care to answer i don't remember this, this doesn't seem like one that i would save on purpose Oh, I think we should leave it. I agree. That's a, it, it, it lives there now. Yeah, that's a spot. Outside of annotating books together, I don't often annotate for myself. I think that's majorly because I don't own a lot of books. I'm a big library girl, love the library, so I don't own a lot of books to write in them myself. Um, I did a lot of annotating like in high school and college, you know, when I'm reading texts so that I can write about them later. I've s started annotating, not... Not as heavily annotating, but I've started marking up books um, to, you know, get information for YouTube videos and stuff like that. But it's not nearly as in-depth and it's not nearly as fun because <laughs> right, yeah. well, when it's really nice to have an audience in mind for annotating because mm -hmm. the things that I would write in, in a book that I'm annotating for Haley are things that I would say to Haley and like commentary and a conversation that, that I would have with Haley anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't feel like I'm being, I don't know, it's not dry in the same way that it is when I'm like, here is the theme of <laughs> whatever. Uh, and like I, you know, circle every time that theme comes up because I need that for a video. Right. I think there are a lot of times where we will just write like OMG in the margin and like I get to see that you reacted that way to yeah. it. And that adds to my experience mm -hmm. um, rather than it being, oh yes, look at this careful analysis. Right, <laughs> or, yeah. yeah, it's more like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I put slay in like the Hunger Games a couple times. <laughs> right. I think every time Blue Star came up in this, I just wrote, <laughs> Girl boss. <laughs> girl boss, girl boss, girl boss, girl boss. All my homies hate Tiger Claw. So <laughs> like, true. It's a lot more laid back and a lot more fun when I know that you're going to be right. reading it because yeah. I, I, I don't know, I can be more loose with it and I know that it's not serving a purpose any other than just yeah. sharing the story. Yeah, it's like, it's something, we're doing it because it's fun. Like you <laughs> can write silly things. And I think that that really came true when we read Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Um, this was a book that <laughs> Sam and I both found like the structure and uh, to be strange and plot holes and the dialogue, we just had to trudge through it. And so, you know, the annotations made it easier to read, I guess. Yeah. Cause what like, would you say? even though we were both frustrated by it and had a lot of like qualms with the book itself, mm -hmm. seeing that you were having those same <laughs> issues was, was really, you know, game changing. Like yeah. I would have DNF this book if it hadn't been for your comments in it. Where it's Thanks. like some of the dialogue is so clunky that um that it's just it was so hard for me to get through, but seeing Haley make a joke about how clunky it is in the margin <laughs> uh, made me want to get to the next piece of clunky dialogue to see what she had to say about that. So it's like, maybe the experience I was better. hating on it a little bit. <laughs> Sam has never read The Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I have. <laughs> Since we've done before, this. Before like a month ago, Sam had never read The Hunger Games, which is like, how do you get out of middle school without reading The Hunger Games, especially in like, you know, the 2010s? And so... Um, I wanted an excuse to reread it, and I wanted Sam to read it, and I knew <laughs> that if I were to read and annotate it and give it to you, that would be a sound way to make sure that Sam read it. <laughs> yeah. So that was really fun. Um, totally. And I do appreciate that because I don't, like, I had no, like, huge urge to read it yeah. until you uh, you annotated it. And now Sam has a huge urge to read the sequel. Yes, the, definitely. We're going to read Catching Fire next. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta get on. Yeah, I have to go buy it. But <laughs> What's up with that? I have to spend money. <laughs> so um, it was cool. Both Sam and I had the experience of reading and annotating a book from our childhood, adolescence, and sharing it with the other person to see, 
you know, there were different scenes that happened in both books where we knew what was coming, but the other person didn't. And like, you know, you described seeing characters from your childhood, like meeting old friends again. Yeah, totally. And so it's cool to share that experience with another person. If I had read The Hunger Games with no context, I think it would have been the type of thing where, you know, I would see that I'm past the age of its target audience. Right. Um, but since you were grounding me in your middle school self reading this as right. I, w- I was going, I had a completely different appreciation for it. Because, like, there were things that I would have just glossed over where you were like, this hit me hard as a 13-year-old yeah. girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and that added context completely changed the reading experience. Um, yeah, Yay. I appreciated it. Of course. <laughs> Try this at home. I think you're going to like it. <laughs> True. If you, too, liked what you saw today <laughs> and would like to get started on your own journey, here's how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay, first... You need someone who wants to do this with you. Haley was a good friend of mine at the time and um, (laughs) who I was, in fact, flirting with. I have read and annotated a book for a friend also besides you. (gasps) I read and annotated a book for a friend for a Christmas gift last year. Mm, That's a great use of it, too. Yeah. um, And she's very bookish. She loves to read. And um, it was like a really she found it to be like a really thoughtful and sentimental gift. Um, I feel like giving someone a book is fine for Christmas um, and also giving someone a book with like your own thoughts inside of it is, um, you know, a personalized step. Totally. It's like a different level of of thoughtfulness. Yeah. Choose a book that you think you're both going to like. That's maybe the most important thing here, because if you have no reason to think that they would like that book, they're probably not. (laughs) Um, This has to be, uh, you know, something that's agreed upon and that you are are both down for because yeah. otherwise it might be a frustrating activity. I think getting started with short books or doing short books in general is helpful because then the turnaround time is smaller. You know, when totally. I give you a book and you're reading and annotating it, I'm like, how is it? Are you, what part are you at? <laughs> is it good? Do you think I'm smart? Totally. Yeah. There's like an anticipation there and like yes. the payoff is really nice. You're going to need a pen. Uh, or a pencil. <laughs> um, sometimes it's nice to do it in two different colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in our first books, I think we both did, um, we did pencil. And like, you can tell whose is whose because our handwritings are different fonts of illegible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Mine's a little swirlier and yours is a little boxier. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so like it, you can do it with the same color, but it looks a little nicer and it's a bit easier to follow uh, when you do it with different color pens. Nice little example there. One thing that you started doing that I didn't initially do was adding the dates. Um, So every time you start reading, you put the date that it is while you're reading. And then you can kind of see like, oh, here's the progression. Like there are some times where if there was a book where you read like a hundred pages in a day, Mm -hmm. meanwhile, I'm breaking that up over like four days. (laughs) Uh, Then it's funny to see like, December 27th and then a hundred pages later December 28th (laughs) there are a couple times where in the Hunger Games I wrote like same day a couple hours later same day a few hours after that same (laughs) day at night (laughs) totally I think it's also important to note that you're doing this for fun and there is no standard of what you need to do um I feel like sometimes especially in the fast-paced parts of the book there's a little bit of pressure to write something on every page And that's simply not true because you're doing it for you and another person. Um, I didn't find, if you hadn't written on a page, I didn't find that to be disappointing. I found that to be natural and neutral. Especially because you and whoever you're reading this with are going to have different reactions and different perspectives. On most of the pages where you didn't write something, I had plenty to write. And so like it ends up being filled out um, regardless. And if if there's a page with nothing on it, that's totally fine. No one's going to care. <laughs> so we've done seven books so far, and uh, it's uh, this is something that I want to keep doing. Do you want to keep doing it? Yes. <laughs> Sweet. So uh, so in the future, they, there are a lot of different directions we can go with this. We could change things. We can keep things the same. Uh, one thing that I know I want to do is I want to reread Time War again and annotate it again. I think it would be really cool to have, like, stacking up um, annotations as we keep rereading stuff. Yeah. Yeah, how about you? Yeah, I think that moving forward, we're probably going to do the rest of the Hunger Games series. Uh, totally. Yeah, I think it would be awesome to, to keep doing the Hunger Games. Um, yeah. If Monk and Robot continues. Which- Becky Chambers continue <laughs> I, I don't think we're doing bookshops and bone dust are we do you want to i don't know because like the first one was fine but i don't know if i feel the need to annotate the second one 
I agree. Like, if I read it, I might just read it. I'm not sure. You'd read it without me? <laughs> this is almost a year ago that we yeah. read this. Isn't that wild? This is our shared library of annotated books that we both annotated. Kind of cool. I'm hoping this grows a lot more uh, and we'll have like a whole shelf of books that we've annotated together. Uh, and I think that'll be really cool. I agree. If you've made it this far, I think you would be a great candidate to be a survivor. A survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you survive. Survive. <laughs> if you made it this far in the video, I think you'd be a great fit to be a subscriber of this channel. I'm Sam Cody. I make book videos here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and follow along with all the future videos. Maybe you'll get to see Haley again too. Thanks, patrons. I am launching more Patreon benefits, such as weekly favorites, which will be uploaded to uh, the Patreon every week, uh, where you can see all of my favorite media that I've consumed that week. If you're interested in that, it used to be my blog, and now it's a Patreon exclusive. This year, I'm not making reading goals, but I'm doing something else. And if you want to find out what that is, click the video that's right here. I'll explain the whole thing. It's like a bingo card type of thing. Okay, okay that's, that's all. all. See, see ya. ya.